talk to your CFO or your CEO, they probably don't understand um, the brand language. Even your CMO might not, right? Like, so mm. I think try to talk their language, which is like a data business impact language. Hey everyone, today we're chatting with Gwen Lafage. Gwen is VP of Brand at Cinch and she takes us behind the scenes of what it takes to be a leader in brand and what the role of brand marketing in B2B is. It's a fascinating ride. So buckle up and let's talk branding. This episode is sponsored by Creative Business Company. But more on that later. I'm Gwen Lafage. I uh, am VP of brand at a company called Cinch. We are the customer communications cloud. So we are a cloud communications provider. We're a global company um, with offices in 60 countries and over 4,000 people. So we're quite a, a big um, leader in our, in our space. Um, I joined Cinch about three years ago after a career in agencies, and I'm originally from France. So I guess that covers a few of who I am. <laughs> yeah, your your name sounds very French. So I, I yeah, figured... Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and the fact that you knew uh, Anna, who is actually my, my coach at Allen, uh, obviously uh, made me think yep. about that. But um, yeah, obviously, Cinch, very interesting uh, brand. And, and I think your, your job as well, VP, of brand is something that a lot of people are curious uh, at. Like, what what does a day in the life of Gwen look like? <laughs> um, that's a good question, and it's hard to condense into a day because I guess we all know this as marketers. All our days are very different, right? Like, uh, not days is, is the same, but I will say a lot of meetings, <laughs> probably too many meetings. But um, I see brand as as being a very important role at the crossroad of like a lot of the other marketing functions. So there's a lot of collaborations with um, uh, our kind of content team or digital team or product marketing team or field team. So I think like we we are really like um, collaborating a lot with a lot of those other teams within our, our marketing team. Um, what a day looks like. So I think it goes from like Team alignment. I also manage a team of like creatives, content writers, and um, brand marketers. So mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of like management one-on-ones, -on -one team meetings, right? Like the kind of normal flow of a of a manager or someone in a leadership position. Um, alignment with all their some of my peers, right? Other marketing leaders in the team, um, and then there's like project specific work. Um, where we will work on a specific campaign. So it could be like a virtual event. It could be like an integrated brand campaign. Um, so we'll collaborate with the team in short of that project. And then there are larger projects like uh, working on brand positioning, working on the consolidation of our brand portfolio. Um, right now we have a project on, on um, yeah, product portfolio and like how we how we make that um, follow a more specific framework. So I think there's a lot of those type of co uh, collaboration. So it could be more on the strategic side as well as like team management and, and project um, involving in, in the project. And I will say that part of the job that I really like as well is the collaboration with the creative teams. I think like that, that definitely fuels me a lot on like brainstorming on ideas and like coming up with cool concepts or checking, um, overseeing some of the creative work that the team have done. So there's a lot, lot of variety in, in what... One of the biggest challenges in my own career has always been to convince business leaders that brand is one of the most important assets in their company. And even though dozens of studies have shown that getting the right strategic positioning can get you a 5x performance on your ads, sometimes convincing executives to prioritize their brand strategy can be challenging. That's why this episode is sponsored by Creative Business Company, a strategic consultancy on a mission to make brand more accountable and more effective. They take the lessons they've learned from over a decade of experience of working with brands such as Morningstar, Shell and Formula E and adapt them to smaller, fast-growing companies. 
to help them get more attention, convert leads and drive sales. So if you're trying to get budget for brand, create messaging that converts or lower your cost of acquisition, check out creativebusinesscompany.com for ideas, evidence and tools that will help you make an impact. I do. Mm. Yeah, and and that begs the question like how much are you still involved in in like creative uh campaign creation all of that stuff because I can imagine maybe <laughs> with your background that's something you're passionate about. Yeah, I like you said yeah, you're right. You're exactly right. I I'm quite passionate about creativity and I think that's why I like this position in a marketing team, right? Like uh I um I like working with designers. I like kind of like um, being involved in, in that process. Um, so I am still involved, not as much as I would like, I think sometimes. Um, but I think because I'm also, I, I think maybe my team will say it differently, but I, I see myself as an idea person. <laughs> I come up with like <laughs> new creative ideas as well. So I, I do like to still get involved in, in that process. I think that give me some, some energy and I think it's part of the fun. So yeah, <laughs> mm. I'm still involved. <laughs> yeah, obviously. And, and I think that's always like a bit of the, the trade off between going into a leadership position where obviously you have to manage versus being only uh, creative. So, so I totally understand that, that, uh, that there is some tension there, but healthy tension, I guess. Um, may maybe like when it comes to brand marketing, like, it's something uh, some people talk about. Some people have it in their job title. Other people don't. Like, what is it? Like, it's very hard to define probably. But for you, like, how would you would you define it? Yeah, I think it's, um, it, it's, it's interesting. And like you said, not every company has it. Um, and sometimes it's just that the name is not there, but they still do yeah. it, right? Like, uh, yeah. I will believe that, I, I believe that like any, any company has some kind of brand. Like I think in, in a way the brand is, is like the essence of the company, right? It's what people say about your company and how you perceived. So mm -hmm. whether or not you've helped craft it internally, you do have one, right? Like whether it's a good one or not, right? It's like, it's a perception, right? It's a perception of how people see you. So every company has a brand. It's just that a lot of companies maybe don't spend the time, the energy on the investment to influence that brand in the way they want and in a way that will like serve them, <laughs> which is a shame because it's a really great asset to, to have. Right. So I think the role of brand marketing is to craft that brand um, so that we influence the way we perceived externally and internally. So it is really about, um, we don't, uh, there's, I guess, a misconception that the brand team own the brand. We really don't because mm. this, this really is not so much what we say as much as what people say about us. So I think we can put ideas in people's mind or like share a narrative and influence how the brand is perceived by like the, the visual and the storytelling and, but we, those are just the way we influence it and then how people really see it and how they will respond on like, what, what do you think about this company? What do you think they stand for? What do you think, what is the perception you have that belongs to the public, right? That belongs to the customers mm -hmm. that belongs to like the prospect or even to people internally. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes that was sometimes some brand gets, damaged by, um, I don't know, a customer service scandal. And no matter how much the brand team will <laughs> make some efforts in crafting a beautiful story, if it's not followed through in like every part of the company, it's not, it's not real, right? Like, so I think the brand marketing team doesn't really own it, but we can influence it by a whole bunch of tactics, by definitely campaigns, but by the positioning, by the narratives, by the visual identity, um, so I think that's the role of the brand team is to put those in place so that we try to put a seed in people's mind on what we want them to think. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe like what, what types of skill sets, traits define like a good brand marketeer? And do you see a difference with other types of marketers? 
Um, I will say that there's a lot of different type of brand marketers or I will say different marketers that belong in a brand team. So mm. I think you have definitely brand marketer and at the same time you can have content marketers and creatives, right? Like designers, motion designers, like videographers, um, as well as project managers. So there's a lot of different uh, type of skills that you can have while belonging to, to a brand team. Mm. As far as the brand marketer goes, I think there's different background. I come from agencies, right? So I've always like worked with designers and I come from being a project manager in agencies, right? Early in, in my career. Um, I think you can come from a lot of different angles. You can start as like a content marketer and evolve into being more maybe of a, a brand marketer or like you come as being like a storyteller, a brand strategist, like a, <laughs> there's a lot of different aspect or creative director. There's a lot of designers that in a way be become like, um, uh, become like a chief creative director or like can lead a brand team uh, after being a, a designer for, for early in their, earlier in their career. So there's different ways to get to it. I will say some of the thing or the skill set or the difference is like a, um, a desire or like at least like a, some kind of passion for, storytelling i will say and mm. um it's probably quite important and then a sensibility in design although i will argue maybe some of the people in the team might not have that sensibility but i i believe that's quite important mm. um at least and understanding the power of like creativity and stories to shape a brand um i think are important I don't know if they're really skills, but like, yeah, aspect of the job. Um, and then you would want like kind of normal marketing skills of like project management, understanding the channels, understanding like the, um, how people buy, understanding the audience. Um, yeah. So I think like some, some kind of like the, a, a link to the metrics, how, how you like, <laughs> how you measure like so kind of a general generalized kind of marketing approach in a way where you touch on a lot of different aspects of marketing uh, but through the angle of like creating more of a story and building a an attachment to the brand and to the company so maybe a bit less on the aspect of short-term lead generation, which is yep. like maybe the thing that like some people are really great at on like delivering fast, quick performance where like in, in, in a brand team, we think maybe more longer term and how we influence the buying cycle and how we influence people. So I think like this aspect of understanding the people and the nature of how they buy, I think is, is quite essential. Mm. Yeah, I mean, as a VP of brand, I can imagine you're, of course, uh, talking a lot with other leadership and trying to convey the the value of, of brand for, for an organization. Like, yep. maybe uh, just walk us through, like, maybe some misunderstandings you've seen, not per se at, at Singe, but in general, when it comes to why you should invest in brand, uh, that could be very interesting, I think. Yeah, I think there's like, there's this aspect that everything is brand and that any activity that you do in marketing um, contribute to building your brand. As much as I agree that like you need the consistency, you need the consistency and you need like everything you do participate to building your brand. If you do your kind of normal performance type of marketing without adding that layer of brand building on top, you will never see a big impact. I think like there's a pros and cons to kind of that perception of like, oh, everything we do is brand anyway, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, sure, that is true. And that's why you need that consistency, right? You really need to have that story and that consistency in everything you do. But at the same time, you will not build a strong brand that if you only do that. So I think that's for me one of the misconceptions on like it's okay, we we have performance ads, right? Like and I think that they will not 
contribute as much to building a brand. So it's like, if you don't do, if you don't have brand within those ads, they will definitely not do anything from you on the long term. But at the same time, if you only do that, you're not going to build that brand in the long term. So I think that's a bit of a misconception. Um, and I think it's definitely interesting to have those discussion with like other marketing leaders on like, what is brand? Not everybody understand the value of consistency, the value of like telling bigger stories of like having content that maybe doesn't deliver immediate leads or it's not so much mm. about the direct conversion, but it's, it's about building that relationship, building that attachment to the brand, creating fans, creating an audience, like all of those aspects that I will categorize as brand building because they're not as immediate. So I think understanding that we that you need to have in mind both the short term and the long term is usually something that I discuss a lot with some of my colleagues and and obviously it's a lot of discussion and balance on where you put the money, right? Like at, mm. at the end of the day it comes down to we don't have a lot of budget where do you put it? And I think you need to have nailed down your performance and like your short term aspects of marketing in order to be able to work on the bigger project. And I think that's also maybe a mistake that people make. It's like, oh, I want to come in and build this great, wonderful campaign. Sure. But if you don't get the company and the leadership believing in marketing in the first place and they don't see immediate value from it, they will never allow you to do the rest, the what I will call the cool stuff because that's <laughs> But I think it's cool. But like, um, you you need for sure to kind of like have the right foundation in place and do that well, so that people in the company trust marketing first, right? So that's a bit of the challenge sometimes. Mm. Yeah, and I really recognize that. Like, even when I entered in uh, in a company, like I oftentimes talk about these things, like sixty forty rule from from Binet and Field, and like these big marketing principles. But like, it's not that you can just go ahead and do that straight away. There's a big evolution that needs to happen. And, and I think a lot of marketers are actually in that position is what you're talking about is like, you need to build that conviction first and maybe start small and start from performance and start building on top of that rather than forcing that idea because it won't work if even if the theory says it works, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And I think it's also like in the foundation of brand, right? Brand built some of the foundation or and in a company that doesn't have brand, they still build those foundations, right? It's like your, um, your identity, right? What is kind of your brand identity? What is your positioning? Um, and it, it is goes in and in with like who's building that in a company. Sometimes it's also product marketing, if, especially if you're like a small, SaaS company with one product, then maybe the product marketing will build those foundation of the positioning. Um, as the company grows and have like a suite of product, you probably need to differentiate between like your brand story that like is the umbrella to the entire product suite and what is like the value prop of each product, which might be different, but also the value prop of each product need to link back to like that big umbrella story. So then it becomes to be a bit more differentiated and a bit more complicated. Um, but ultimately that if you have only one project, one product and one look and feel, one identity, that's at the core of your brand, right? And in SaaS, mm -hmm. it's often very linked with the product, which I think like the product marketing and brand is like a really important link and collaboration that is really needed, especially when it comes to crafting that positioning because it's like how you go beyond some of the product features and tell a bigger story on like how you solve the problem, like how you like um, can capture the emotion of the audience at a different kind of level than the product, right? I believe mm. on the brand, if I had to differentiate, I will say that brand is more on the emotional feeling aspects um, maybe a bit less rational where like product still and product marketing still s stays on the pretty rational aspect of what is the value prop. Um, and maybe on the brand side, you need to inject that emotional aspect.
Mm. Because people yeah. buy that way, right? <laughs> like people buy that way as well. So yes. I created this podcast to help myself and others understand the power of brand building without all of the BS. So here's three no BS guides from my friends at Creative Business Company that you can download for free to drive impact. The brand investment blueprint outlines the exact process they use to convince skeptical executives to invest in brand building projects and campaigns. How challengers can position for growth explains how brands can find and leverage their hidden advantage to create brand marketing that sells. And last, my favorite, how to build a big brand on a small budget explores how to outsmart and overtake market leaders with more cost-effective marketing. Go to creativebusinesscompany.com slash staff to download your free guides today. That's creativebusinesscompany.com forward slash S-T-E-F to download your free guides today. Back to the podcast. <laughs> no, it's very interesting. I, I was just uh, like looking, uh, scrolling on the uh, Substack and I saw this uh, interesting visual where it was like, um, I think it was Zoom and a couple of other like uh, big uh uh, companies, uh, tech companies, and showed like screenshots from uh, three years ago up until now, how their messaging evolved. And what was interesting was like, it started with all three companies, very product driven, like we're the remote uh, meeting uh, company that does X, Y, and Z to something where it was like connect anywhere or something <laughs> very, you know, very brand uh, aspirational. And the point of the author was like, at some point you're overshooting in terms of benefits and, and like maybe making it that emotional that it becomes like just vague. And Too I'm wondering fluffy. like, yep. yeah, I'm wondering <laughs> your take on like where that may be. Do we overshoot sometimes and how to keep that balance? Like, uh... Yeah. And I think I, I probably know who you referencing because I think there's a lot of discussion on LinkedIn around this and like especially about what message you put at the top of your homepage. And yeah, I think it's I... like it's it's also an I interesting aspect and I, I I agree. I think it depends where you are in the maturity of your company and it depends how much people know your company and know what you do. So mm. I don't think there is like I I don't think we should say, oh you know I <laughs> I don't really like the approach of like looking from an exterior perspective on here's the homepage of a whole bunch of company and they suck, right? Like mm. they're really bad. It's like you, when you're doing that once, you're not the buyer. So like yeah. you can say that from your perspective and obviously you can say that because maybe you're selling positioning for like startup companies, right? Like So, so then it serves yourself to kind of say that it's like, Hey, I, I, and, and I, I understand that, but I think like, mm. you're not the buyer, you maybe like coming at it from that very narrow perspective with that understanding as well, like where the team was and what the company challenges are. And maybe it's a company that needs to like build more of that emotional connection with their buyers and maybe people know what they do. So they don't need to kind of <laughs> go to the website and say, Zoom, I, a, <laughs> you know, we, we do like video yeah. calls, right? Like, I mean, it's, 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 they may be beyond that stage, but, and I also, I feel like there is a complexity in companies that serve, that sell like a big portfolio, um, that you, it's a lot harder to have a one value prop that links to one product. Yeah. Do you lead with one product or do you lead with something that is more, generic because it's more umbrella or do you lead with like an emotional thing so i think there's different approach i wouldn't say that like we can categorically say like one is better than another i think as everything it depends mm -hmm. um is the place of a brand message on the home page or at the top level of your home page maybe not or maybe not always or maybe for a short time yes when we just launch your big brand campaign you might want to have that at the top header but then maybe it will change right like you don't have to have it there all the time maybe it's because you're launching this big campaign and you have billboards and all those things that will resonate and ads that like resonate but it it doesn't have to be right like i think there's a place maybe for those big brand messages 
Um, maybe they belong more in ads and their landing page for the campaign rather than being that top level, right? Like it's, yeah. it varies. I think there's different levels of like brand messaging as well, right? Like your positioning and what your product does, what value you deliver versus that big campaign you just launch, which is like, I don't know, we can take the example of Salesforce, for example, because they have that, that big portfolio, big campaign right now around AI and like we are all Einstein and like they, they infusing like that AI into a lot of their product and, and they have like um, ads and cool videos and like, and that's kind of a brand campaign. You go to the Salesforce website, it will be there, but it will probably not be that top level yep. right so i think it's it's where you place it which i think there's a big misconception sometimes on t- where things should go <laughs> mm, yeah totally and i think it's a important nuance you you bring to the table maybe because you you said the the magical two letters we could talk about it a little bit ai um <laughs> <laughs> we we have to almost but uh yeah. <laughs> i i, I I saw, I saw uh, you made a, like a, an, a, I think you, you had a guest article on, or, or something uh, about uh, AI and specifically generative AI, I think, how it can yep. help brand and content marketers. And I'm very curious about your perspective. So. Yeah. So, yeah. So I had like um, an interview with a company called Frontify. They're like a brand um, management platform. So brand asset management. Yeah. Um, and um, we, we're a client of them. So like they, and they interview me on, on AI and the, how with the future of AI will change creative, creativity and the impact on creative team and the impact on like content and brand in general. Um, I'm, I'm not an AI expert at all, but I will call myself an AI enthusiast. Like I, um, like learning the possibility. I think like with everything, I'm a pretty curious person. And I think that's, um, I always like to look into and read and check what's happening and try to like be an early adopter of, of stuff before they sometimes disappear. Right. Like, <laughs> but, um, so I've kind of played around and I realized that I use AI maybe more and more, um, for various things and I like experimenting with it. Maybe not enough that I would like to but if i had the time i'll probably do do more but i will think i think that yes it will impact every single marketing team and the one that don't really explore experiment and use it in will be left behind because it will help us accelerate and work faster and um i think there's definitely a benefit there on efficiency and productivity when it comes to creativity, um, it's, I call it, I think, like a, a sidekick or like a superpower that like creative team can can uh, leverage to do things. I don't believe at all that it will replace creative. I think like creativity is, is definitely a human trait <laughs> and the AI can help you brainstorm, push you in a way like I... I think it can also help you execute on an idea. Um, I, I, I think it, it's just, it just helped. Like I, for example, I, I, um, I've always liked writing creative briefs and add at the end of the creative brief, what I will call the bad, my bad way in. And <laughs> when I was working agency, usually creative will ignore because it's like, Hey, that comes from mm. account. What do they know? Right. Like, <laughs> But when you're in house <laughs> and you're like the brand person, then you listen a bit more, I guess. And um, they said, "Oh, well, look into the ideas that you have." And I think now, what is cool is that I can put my ideas in like a chat GPT or like and actually put an image to it. It's like, yeah. "Hey, here's the idea I have for this creative brief. Here's some inspiration." And of course, it's like, "Please, creative team, you're the creative." Don't follow, but if you feel the idea is worth exploring, please explore, right? Like, so I think there's, I think anyone can have a good idea. I don't think, I think we are all creatives in different ways. Um, and I believe that like that can help people that are creative unleash and yeah, unlock some of that creativity. So I think there's a lot of power to it. Um, but the creativity itself lives in within people. Right. Mm. So it needs the people to get there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, 
no, I mean, uh, that's uh, really interesting and, and maybe link to that because I think I, I've seen this in, at some companies uh, that I'm advising for is like with this rise of AI and this hopefully increase in efficiency and this sidekick, there is also something happening along the lines of, um, let's say, in-house versus outhouse production where, where you see a lot of companies saying well let's try and do as much as we can ourselves also you know inflation things cost a lot of money so we'll make it more profitable and and i'm wondering like um what your feeling is on on like brand teams working with agencies versus uh, scaling internally creativity and so on uh yeah just curious about your perspective there <laughs> Yeah, I well, I come from agencies, right? So mm -hmm. I uh, <laughs> the dark I have side. Maybe like yeah, yeah. I don't know which one is the dark side, like uh, <laughs> agency or in house. Uh, I I'll, um I I believe in agencies, and I don't think like like AI. I think there was a statement uh, that like AI is gonna like kill ninety five percent of all creative agencies, and like. I don't believe that to be true, to be honest. I think like agency will also evolve and find ways to like um, leverage AI themselves to kind of offer something else, right? Like to, I think the benefit to me of agencies is to bring in an external perspective at the moment of time. I mean, there's two, there's two things that I see and how I work with agency or we work with agency internally, there's two ways. One is like that external perspective that out of the box idea, ideas, those like um, creative approach that you can have when you don't work on the products and the company day in, day out, um, you can come in with a fresh, fresh eyes, right? Like, so mm -hmm. I think those fresh eyes and like, you don't need your agency to know everything about you and your company and your products. Like I think agency tend to come in, wanted to like do two months of research on like who you are and stuff. I'm like, I don't want you to do that. Like I know my product. I know my company. I want you to come in without maybe knowing everything, which is mm -hmm. why we need those external perspective, right? Like you don't need two months to ramp up on like, Oh, we don't know everything. It's fine. You don't need to, you need, we want those kind of like, perspective that maybe are not so deep into the product and the company that you can actually come up with something new that we haven't thought about. So I think that to me is like a big um, interest of like having a creative agency. And the second part is scaling. Um, I think scaling up and down, right? Like scaling up and down more flexibly. Um, yeah. Because if you have, if you hire people in house, right? Like you, you know, everything ebb and throw and especially in tech, right? We have moment when we need to produce a lot and budgets are higher. And then this moment when it's not right. And so I think if you are not mindful of that, you see a lot of company hiring and firing people, which I don't think is <laughs> good thing. Mm -hmm. I think you need to think about long-term on like, do I need these people long-term? I'd rather like keep the people I hire and not have to let them go. So I'd rather have an agency and they're a lot easier to let go. Hey, that's the nature of it, right? Like, so I think that kind of flexible approach and the scalability of it. And when you have volume going up and a certain months, you have too much to do, then you can bring them up. They help scale. So yeah. I think that will still be true, AI or not, right? Like, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I definitely see a value in in agencies yeah. in some different expertise. And like, will it replace certain agencies? Yes. Will some stuff be automated for sure? Um, but there will still be some needs. And I think like yeah. there's also an aspect of like understanding your audiences, right? Like understanding who you're talking to when like understanding people and how they buy and you need to talk to people, right? Like you need to like understand how they work, uh, how they think. And that is also sometimes that an agency can help you with because people might not tell you if you're the company stuff that they might tell to an external partner. So I see a value there too. So a lot of values to agency. I still 
like <laughs> agencies <laughs> in many ways. Well, uh, I think uh, the the people on the agency side will be happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I I will also f I also see the huge value of having like a team in house, right? Like I don't want to mm. externalize everything. There is a need for a brand team to like fully understand the audience, fully understand their products, um, understand the dynamic of the company, understand like, um, yeah, the, the how, how we work internally, which that level of understanding will never be matched by someone in the, in the agency. And like when, when we talk about brand, there's also the so leadership aspect, um, mm -hmm. the leveraging, like the subject matter experts internally, and working with them directly, producing content that is deep and that is like only possible with the expert within the company that I think it will be really hard to match by like an agency because they don't have that deep knowledge. Um, so it's, it's both, right? Like, of course, yeah. I would like to scale my brand team even more, <laughs> um, as well as work with like big agency or not big, but like agencies in general, but, yeah, when you have to make choice, I think like you need to be smart about yeah. what you bring in house versus what you keep external. Mm -hmm. All right, maybe one more question to wrap it up. Um, uh, a lot of people like that I talk to working in this this space of brand and content, um, like a lot of people struggling to find ways to like punch through and grow to the next level and maybe become a VP or like a leadership position, like. What be what would be your advice for people like maybe feeling a bit stuck in the day to day production levels or whatever and, and like coming up to that next level? I will say think strategically and think that people probably don't talk your brand language. So if you it could be your CMO or definitely higher up or you talk to your CFO or your CEO they probably don't understand um, the brand language. Even your CMO might not, right? Like, so mm. I think try to talk their language, which is like a data business impact language, um, which is, I think, something that we forget as like, and I say we because I've done that as well, right? And I came from agencies where we don't really... We think about, look at this cool creative campaign and look at this like super cool stuff I have done. And people will be like, yeah, but did you move the needle? What kind mm -hmm. of impact did it have on the company, right? Like on the bottom line, what kind of like pipeline did you create? I'm like, great that you had, you know, a thousand likes on your post, but who cares? Like, did it bring business, right? Did, did it change something for the company itself, its clients, like, I think that's sometimes what the tendency, I think, of, like, brand marketer to judge our work through, like, the cool factor <laughs> of of it, which I, I mean, I, me first, right? I, I love, yeah. like, the creativity and the, the cool aspect of what I do. And, like, um, but we have to, like, took people's luggage on, like, how much, business did it drive? Did it help drive demand? Did it help drive like customer loyalty? Did it actually deliver business results? Um, and I think that's something that we need to do more of. And I will encourage any kind of brand marketers to like think that way on like go to some of the metrics and collaborate with your digital team, your like performance team so that they can also be the advocate for what you share yeah. with them. I think there's like a strong coordination or like collaboration with performance and brand. It's like maybe the brand team will come up with like some really cool video that actually your performance marketer will be super happy to use because they are so tired of those boring ads and <laughs> yours are going to perform much better. And you maybe have thought about them as a brand marketing, but they might perform better on the performance side. So I think bring things back to like business impact will be my biggest advice. I think that's a, <laughs> a golden nugget right there. So uh, <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Gwen, for coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, um, pleasure to talk to you. 
All right, that was it for this episode. As always, if you want to stay up to date on the latest episodes, check out the show notes and find out more interesting stuff about brand strategy and brand building, visit letstalkbranding.substack.com. That's letstalkbranding.substack.com. 